<laughs> you said you went to a lake? Yeah. What lake? Lake Dean. Dean in, in Indiana? Yeah. How far is that? It's like 40 minutes away. Oh, okay. What'd you do up there? You went on a boat? You swam? This is not an exciting story. I just sat by a lake. <laughs> I don't know why you wanted to lead with this riveting tale of relaxing for four hours. The audience needs Literally to know. Literally nothing happened. Were you sitting in sand or were you sitting in dirt? Or uh, sitting in I did a little sand, a little picnic table action. A little picnic table action. And uh, a lot of time in the water. Did you go alone? Yes. You did? <laughs> That's not an absurd question. People go to lakes alone all the time. There was only one man who was there alone, and he like I was looking at him from the water, and he like I watched him walk all the way down from the top because he was just yeah he, he was just like all alone, and he walked into the water and just never stopped walking until he got to like the little buoy thing at the end, and then just put his arms like around it and just like settled in was like. That guy sounds like he recently got out of a relationship. I was like, this isn't not close enough to, this is such a far drive to make after a bad day. Yeah. There's nothing that's that close to here. Maybe he works <laughs> in the lake. <laughs> Maybe he just got done emptying out the uh, septic tanks yeah. at the RV park. He's a fisherman. Also, how are you going to be like, no, of course I didn't go to a lake by myself. You think of yourself as some sort of dumb author guy. <laughs> Man, I went like, to reflect. It's not like Henry David Thoreau was <laughs> coming into town and people were like, hey. Who's out there with you? Were you out there alone? And he was like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> what are you No, kidding? I wasn't alone. The person who was driving kept, we were trying to find a parking spot and she kept going, is that a spot? I was like, that's for an RV. She was like, what about that one? I'm like, that's also for an RV. Maybe like, we can stretch this car out. <laughs> I'm like, what about that one? I was like, if it has that box on it, it's for an RV. <laughs> Are you sure my car doesn't have a septic tank uh, <laughs> disposal I could plug in? I've got hookups. Yeah. <laughs> she puts her jumper cables onto it, kills herself. Oh, no. That's not a fun day at the lake. It's the worst day at the lake. <laughs> well, I've had worse days at a lake. I always like in the lake when there's a fallen tree in the lake. And then you can kind of sit on it. Yeah, you can like, and then it kind of spins. You feel like you're all of a sudden it's yeah. like, hey, lumberjack Olympics. <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm fucking one of those guys from that town in The Hobbit. <laughs> uh, that just sounded like they were playing Bass Test 2 <laughs> out of that car. That didn't sound like a song. <laughs> that would be great if it's like... <laughs> flip CD over to test treble. <laughs> we got a little bit of a car show going yeah. on next door today. It's one of those situations where they're like showing off the car in the stereo... But also, it seems like they're also working on the car. There's, there's, one, there's one car that looks pretty nice yeah. and seems to have a nice setup. The other car is shitty, but also still seems to have a nice stereo system. And the other car looks wrecked. <laughs> I think what they're doing is they started with just the good car. Yeah. And then they're like, all right, how can we make these cars like that car? <laughs> <laughs> well, they probably started with the wrecked car, look turned it into that mid-grade car, and then they flipped it over into that other one. My so now they're, we're seeing all, every stage of the process. Maybe. It's a business meeting. Maybe what's going on is they're testing some sort of like, uh, ass. They're testing the effects of acid rain on vehicles, and what we're actually seeing are three brand new cars, <laughs> <laughs> and then one of them has had acid rain, a hundred percent. The other one fifty percent. The other one test car. <laughs> oh my god! Can I borrow this suburban? Test test drive. Test drive it. <laughs> you just crash it? What the fuck was that? This one was the test. This was the test. I was testing it out. <laughs> the other two were the control cars. <laughs> Those drives went uneventful. I've got to do a regular scientific experiment. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I got Whoa. This Eric's going there. shirt off. And he's revealing a penis... Written in flesh color, written, uh, surrounded by red color. It's very strange. Yeah. <laughs> you ever see anyone actually do that at the beach? I've done it to myself all the time. Have you actually? <sighs> oh, okay. I was going to say, you don't get tan. <laughs> you're not. I get tan. Yeah, I mean, you're not, it's not like you're like, ah, it's Sunday, time to oil up. <laughs> ah, maybe I'll be goofy today. <laughs> Time to grab my trifold reflector yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go break into an old woman's car and get one of the <laughs> I don't have to break in. I got my minions right there. Yeah, Eric does have a minions <laughs> car reflector. 
It's a family heirloom. <laughs> <laughs> Technically. Yeah, why don't they just cover the planet with those to make everything less hot? Yeah, just bounce it all back. Yeah. Not like no, we well, need sunlight for anything. I just meant more so cover the world with minions. <laughs> why don't we get some minions <laughs> to finish this job up for us? <laughs> Uh, so you you went to the outside on a he, he, heaty day like this, and now you're eating flaming hot Cheetos? And on the way there, I had a spicy chicken sandwich from Burger King, uh, based on our friend's suggestion. What friend? <laughs> Ryan posted like three things about that fucking sandwich on Facebook. Oh, uh, Ryan who? Darling. Oh, Ryan Darling. Yeah, yeah he did. <laughs> At least I love Ryan. Burger King. Burger King is nice. Another ringing endorsement. I like those uh, ads, how now they're like, it's the Burger King, and he's having an identity crisis, because his chicken sandwich is so good, that he's like, people are going to start thinking of me this, this chicken king, or some kind of... <laughs> I'm going to get sued by those people Have you not seen those ads? No, I haven't. Oh, they're great. <laughs> it's I a don't great see ad. ads anymore. <laughs> All right, someone's cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just don't have that job anymore. I mean, you can see ads outside. I don't of work, work for that ad executive anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can see ads all kinds of places. Where am I going to watch TV? Where am I going to watch? <laughs> yeah, you literally can't watch this TV. It won't, just, turn that, on. It won't even work. It asked me if it was on. <laughs> It'll like, turn on and then say, "Is this TV on? <laughs> is it on?" The problem might be I'm not on. Yeah, I think I think if we keep looking into that, we'll end up in the Matrix. I think it's like a space odyssey thing. Yeah, <laughs> you is know it I can't on? do that. <laughs> I can't allow you to see the levels on the big screen, Eric. <laughs> Why not, Samsung? <laughs> Roku, you bastard. We need to see the levels. Roku would be a good name for an evil robot if Roku didn't already exist. Roku? I mean, not, that, not that Roku isn't already an evil robot. Well, originally it was going to be the Amazon Khan. <laughs> like K H A N. Roku. And then they were like, we can either do Khan or Roku. <laughs> Us and Star Trek, we gotta share. I don't even know what you're talking about. Khan? I don't know what Khan is. Khan! How the fuck is Amazon related to Roku? This just all stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's all just technology. Yeah. No, if Roku, Roku would be a villain, like Khan. Oh, okay. And it would be like, Roku... And then someone would throw a severed head down at his feet. Here's your gift. Here's your here's, here's your, your payment. Here's your girlfriend. <laughs> and then Roku's pissed. God damn it. Talk about getting head. <laughs> Roku 3. This time, <laughs> it's wacky. This time, funny <laughs> stuff. There's a guy hobbling a horse <laughs> as it runs by. Uh, no, man. I have to put those shorts on real quick. I'm fucking yeah, it's very hot. And then we'll start for we'll start for real. I like how he said those shorts as if I like know. <laughs> as if you're like, I gotta go put on, you know, those shorts. <laughs> You know the ones. Now the uh, middle school fez ed uh, shorts. <laughs> I, I, I've got two pairs of like basketball shorts that I wear. Yeah. I've got just a plain black one. And then the other ones say uh, Trinity High School Wrestling. Because I wrestled my freshman year of high school. Did you take them from your boyfriend? No, I wrestled my freshman year, and I am confident that if that wrestling coach saw me still owning those, like, fucking 17 years later, he would be mad. (laughs) Why didn't you give those back? (laughs) He would be very mad to know I wear those (laughs) while I'm dancing around to fucking the Pet Shop Boys. You have had so much time to give those back. I know. (laughs) If you'd called, I would have paid the shipping. No, I wrestled my freshman year of high school. It was one of the dumbest decisions I've done in my wrestled life. Wrestled with what? Uh, to, uh, <laughs> fitting in. <laughs> in a larger scale, fitting in. Smaller scale, literally. Smaller scale? Uh, welterweight. Greco-Roman. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what the wrestling class is. No, are. I was... Uh, 
what are the weights? Twink bear otter. I think. <laughs> Yokozuna. <laughs> I was a rikishi. <laughs> no, I was like a one twelve. Oh, I think it's just numbers. Oh, it's just numbers. I think okay. it's like one nineteen, one twenty seven, one twelve, and then it's like heavyweight. Well, that's why you gotta make weight. Heavyweight. <laughs> No, man, one time I went, because I was so bad at it, like, from the start. And then one time they were like, yeah, Dan, only the good people are going to have to wrestle tomorrow. Don't worry. And then so I went and ate a bunch of Mexican food. And then the next day they were like, Dan, you're underweight. You're overweight. And you need to, okay, we got four hours. You need to put on all these garbage bags. And you're like, I quit. No, I went, I lost all the weight. Did I lost, really? like, 10 pounds in, like, four hours. And then, uh, uh. And then, but then they were like, all right, you did it, Dan. Are you ready to run? And you've been pinned. <laughs> <laughs> and because you participated, we've now lost the whole overall match because <laughs> if, if you wouldn't have done it, we would have won. <laughs> Why did you need to wrestle? I don't understand. Was somebody sick? I don't know, man, because, because in Ohio... The cable went out one year, I guess, and they were like, we need high school kids to wrestle. We gotta get something on the air. Yeah, how the fuck did they invent high school sports? <laughs> Good God, how bored were they? I guess a bunch of high school kids can debate. I guess, what if we have these kids yell at each what other? What if we watch these high school kids do chess? Do any of you kids like, <laughs> do any of you kids like to sing? <laughs> that, that was a mistake. Wrestling? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wanted to quit so bad. What the fuck was your motivation? Honestly, I have no idea. Because, <laughs> like, I think I vaguely at that time was, like, it was the tail end of that era of me being, like, professional wrestling's kind of fun to, like, watch and shit. But it was the tail end of that. So I, like, and I don't think those things were connected. I think I literally was just, like, I'm 14. I'm in a new high school. It's time to time fit in. Time to fit in. Wrestling. Wrestling. No, I mean, my friend Jason also did it. Uh, now, we didn't do it, like, together. We just separately did it, and then, like, we're like, oh, we're both doing this. And I remember once at practice, I kept just accidentally hitting him in the balls. Just on, It was completely on accident. But it just kept happening. I kept hitting him in the balls. And then he kept needing to, like, stop to, like, take a break. Yeah. And then I remember in my mind, I was like, I should just keep hitting Jason in the balls, because then we won't have to, like, do drills. <laughs> <laughs> because the coach seems to give us like five minutes every time I fucking mule kick him when he's over me trying to get mule kick him yeah <laughs> he's, he's trying to hook my move? leg and I'm is like is that oh, a high school hurt. wrestling move mule kick that's one of mine <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to have signature moves <laughs> in high school wrestling I would do this thing called the claw <laughs> I would lose every time. <laughs> but the like, crowd the would go, fuck? he's going for the claw. <laughs> what the fuck? It's my signature move, coach, and they love it. <laughs> claw, 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 claw. <laughs> they they just blow the whistle to start the match, and like we're both crunched down, and then I just sort of look around and stand up. Where where's the top row? <laughs> they tackle me. That would be a fun like high, top like wacky high school comedy, like a weird indie high school comedy, like a guy's on the wrestling team and he just wants to be a professional wrestler. Oh, and the right. school loves him and the coach hates him. Yeah. So the coach can't get rid of him. Oh, that would be great actually cuz he's like <laughs> pumping everybody yeah, up. Yeah, he's like yeah. going wild. He's got his own costume and everything. He's, doing flips and he's fucking his, whatever it is, yeah. like elbow dropping people. Yeah. The high school wrestling events are sold out for the first time ever. Yeah. They're able to charge for the first time ever. It's no longer a free event. It's ticketed. No, man, it would be genius if you ran like a high school sports to run the ticket booth and charge way too much <laughs> because then it's like all these kids parents and shit and they're like oh i guess here's fifty dollars <laughs> <laughs> seems a bit high for a cyo <laughs> and then they the come local. inside and someone is like all right five dollars and they come out and that ticket booth is empty yeah i'm gone <laughs> i'm gone i'm on to the next high school I'm wrestling the, event i'm at the movies panting going god i hope they didn't see me leaving the book depository <laughs> <laughs> no man high school wrestling is other is what there's stuff you can't do because like all the cool stuff it's like it's like uh it's like on skateboarding everything that's like cool in video games it's like oh yeah none of that's in real life yeah of course not so high school wrestling is just incredibly boring like there's one time one of the good kids on our team 
There's so much stuff looking back that was like, oh, our coach was just bullying us. Yeah, that's what fucking wrestling coaches do. What did you think your wrestling coach was going to be, be like, like? All right, everyone's going to wrestle everybody. Not at like the same time, but like <laughs> drill. The so Royal it's, Rumble? I was like, all right, 14 year old, 119 pound Dan Alton. You versus 18 year old. Let's be honest, he's probably got held back. 25 year old. <laughs> Versus a 32-year-old Mick Foley. Yeah, who's fucking... Who's still working on his degree. 350 pounds. <laughs> a guy whose tits are so nice, I just came. <laughs> He's gonna fucking... A guy whose tits are nicer than any female tits you've seen yeah. yet. He's... You two are gonna... Ra- no, we did that. And then... Because everyone on the wrestling team was mad at me. All the good people. Yeah. Because they all thought my sister was hot. So yeah. that made them hate me for some reason. Well, they're like, why can't, why aren't you hot like her? I know. We could just fuck you. <laughs> but I get that, man. Because I once, I once took a baseball bat to Jessica Alba's brother's kneecap. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> why aren't you hot like her? Come over here. Uh, uh, who's an attractive person in the media? Come over here. Uh, Terry. Uh, Terry Gross. Terry Gross. <laughs> His brother. I was trying to think of Terry. Uh, what the fuck is her name? Terry Shiloh. <laughs> Sherry O'Terry. That's also Sherry not O'Terry. sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Hatchet or whatever. <laughs> Terry Pratchett? Get over here, Terry Lois Pratchett. Lois and Clark. <laughs> so I was fucking Neil Gaiman. <laughs> and, uh... No, man. I'm railing William Gibson from behind. <laughs> <laughs> no, he picked me up one time and, like, in the air and then threw That's me not down. A move. <laughs> no, I know. And then he threw me down. <laughs> it was like a loud thud and everyone <laughs> laughed. And then my coach went, Hey, man, you know you're not allowed to release anybody. Release? And then we were all like, what? And then he's like, yeah, you can't just pick someone up and drop them. And then we're all like, oh, high school wrestling sucks. So you can pick them up. You can slam somebody, but you have to be holding them the whole time. Oh, so, so I you have to be like, holding them and then drop them you like, have to, like, with fall you. with them. Yeah, yeah, okay. Which is almost more painful. More that weight. was his critique of that situation? Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> that's not that's not official wrestling rules. Hey, when you choke slam him through the table, you have only ten seconds to get back in the ring, Nick. You know that. Uh, no, I think that kid had anger problems because he went on to. Oh, uh, yeah, he went on to coach college men's cheerleading. Uh, and and he's I think that guy had some <laughs> hidden anger, <laughs> but he. Uh, no man he slammed me very hard and then i was like god if only i could do the claw if only i could do the claw <laughs> claw claw, claw. Move. that's a great idea someone should steal that i don't want to really do anything <laughs> yeah. no that's a lot of work you need to write a whole movie it's more actually fun. don't steal it i got some free time it's more fun to just go claw this claw. is official copyright <laughs> We're gonna mail this podcast we're to ourselves mail this podcast. <laughs> and not open the letter <laughs> until we're in court. And then we open it, and we're just like, "Oh, this is something else." Oh shit! I picked the wrong one. <laughs> this says Bear Tracker. <laughs> this this is an app I could do bad for hunters. No, we should go. We should start watching high school wrestling. I don't think we should do that. No, we should. <laughs> I remember one time it was a blind kid. Versus a girl, that was crazy. The girl kicked his ass. <laughs> <laughs> when you wrestle a blind kid, you have to be touching them the whole time. Well, you have to be. T- you're not allowed to release, so you should be touching them the whole time. Anyway, no, you can release as long as you're not picking up. You can, you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, hey, no release. Just some guy coming everywhere. <laughs> You had to be hard, but no release. No release. <laughs> Wrestling is all about edging. Yeah. <laughs> Now, and this one guy on our team, Scott, he fucking, he got banned for like a month or some shit because uh, this kid put his, put his arm in Scott's mouth and he bit it. And then, and then this kid pushed Scott's head down. So then Scott bit this kid's arm, but it's like, you did that to yourself. Yeah. That's not fair. And then the kid was like, ah, I've been bit. <laughs> I mean, that kid's kind of smart, though. That is really smart. That's a pretty smart move. <laughs> and he winked after the ref turned his eyes, and the crowd went, boo. Boo. Yeah, we need, like, a heel for the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody oh, like yeah. that. Someone who's, you know, following the rules, but not really yeah. following the rules, you and then know? And we see Scott has to earn his way back. 
Yeah. <laughs> Scott's like, no, you know what, commissioner of high school wrestling? I'm going to wrestle you. <laughs> It'll be me, a 17-year-old. Hyped up a 68-year-old man. Guy. No, the end of it is just you coming out covered in plastic bags, yeah. <laughs> sweaty. sweaty. You lose immediately, and then the wrestling, the big wrestling star goes, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> and beats the shit out of you. Yeah. And then he's finally disqualified because he released. What a match! We've just gotten word Dan finally shit out the rest of the beans <laughs> and rice from. <laughs> we last just got night. word Dan is finished wiping and is ready to rumble. <laughs> Here he comes. <laughs> oh, that looked spicy. He's waddling. <laughs> Not moving too fast after that burrito, is he? It's the the guy with the ref whistles to start it, and before the whistle dies, I've been pinned. So then it's just <laughs> one continuous whistle sound. And then they're like, you know what? We're going to go to slow mo. <laughs> and then you see in the audio, there's like a slight dip. <laughs> Uh, it was nearly a continuous whistle. No, that show was great, man. If I could go back and do it again, I would be like, uh, hey, I think this coach was trying to have sex with a bunch of these high school girls. <laughs> was he? Uh, I think he was. Uh, I, I mean, in my high school, a guy got, one of the teachers got busted for having sex and like, went to jail and shit. Uh, so then I think all the other teachers were like, we better cool it. We're everybody, cool, everybody, it, everybody <laughs> chill out. Every, everybody chill. Let's take a couple years off. Everybody, let the heat wear off. Everybody chill the fuck out. Let's wait until all these kids are out of here and we can start this all over again. Yeah, but I think definitely. That was my theory before all that was going on. Well, it's a Catholic with school, With several right? of the teachers. It's a Catholic school, and people in my area are, like, pretty trashy where I'm from. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, man. And also, I mean, like, who the, like. Also, who isn't in Cleveland? Who's going to become a t- high school teacher at a shitty school? <laughs> like. Like, I know people who are high school teachers, and they're all, like, they're, like, in bands and, or, like, whatever. They, like, yeah. do other things. Yeah. Other things have led them to this point. Yeah. But it's, like, I can't even imagine someone who's just, like, no, I'm just a high school teacher. This is all I've ever wanted. What do I do in addition? I coach football. I, that's my other high hobby. School. I hang out with more children. Yeah. I, different children. I find a way to get my own friend group. Of children. <laughs> of children. Don't worry, I keep it fresh each, each year. No, no, I, I never hang out with them again after that. I cycle them in and out. Yeah. I, uh... <laughs> yeah. That's what I do. I coach and ditch. I'm trying to figure out a way to make that rhyme. No, no, like, uh... <laughs> I'm trying to make a hit it and quit it rhyme hit it and coach. quit it. <laughs> Can't make it happen. Coach hit it and... and split it. Talk, and when I say hit it, I mean the showers. I mean the showers. <laughs> when I say split it. <laughs> that does cheeks. <laughs> yeah. No, or that, mine, whatever you're feeling today. That stuff is wild. That uh, pedophilia. Yeah, I'm, I think it's pretty fucking crazy. <laughs> no, that like fucking because that that must happen because people get caught. Like, teachers get caught and shit. Yeah. So imagine how much more is not being caught. Like that's I mean, absurd. I told you about that teacher at my school where everybody just like knew and thought it was funny. <laughs> like, Mostly because it was a dude and a girl. You know, it was a the girl. It was a young girl. It was no. It was a young dude oh a young dude okay yeah yeah i was about to say the other way around that's that's no good <laughs> honestly could have walked into it like he could have walked into a freshman class and posed as a teacher and gotten away with it this guy was like a <laughs> he was like that guy i was like dude you, you i don't think you belong it's john ham <laughs> <laughs> he's getting off the bus his mom's dropping him off you are a man yeah. you just give this guy his diploma and let him out of here i'm surprised he's only fucked that teacher <laughs> It's third period. I need to go shave or I'll be in dress code violation again. <laughs> My shadow's coming in strong. I'm sorry. I just grew two more inches. I have to go change. My shorts are too short now. <laughs> My skirt is now too. <laughs> My skirt. <laughs> if you don't mind, I have to go to work. And you're fighting like you're a principal. And you're fight- I leave early? My shift starts at noon. <laughs> You're like a, dis- a high school disciplinarian, and you're like fighting with your wife, and you're like, "I need to go to work, honey, and measure these girls' skirts." <laughs> what do you mean I'm looking at other women? <laughs> it's my job. <laughs> what do you think paid for this house? <laughs> house is shaped like a big skirt. 
even when I was in high school and it was like the same age as those people, and it would be like my girlfriend like wearing that, I'd be like, this is creepy. Oh, like a Catholic school girl's outfit? Yeah, because I went to Catholic schools and shit. So they had the girls wore that shit? Yeah, the girls would wear that shit. And it yeah, was always this like. Right, just make them wear like pants. Yeah, and it was always very creepy because it was like. It's like, why are you guys enforcing this? Why are a bunch of adult men enforcing that my girlfriend dressed like she's in a fucking <laughs> porno? Porno. <laughs> yeah. Why are you forcing all of these children to have boners? Yeah. Hey, you, sophomore. Unbutton that top button. No, that's not a thing. But <laughs> you know, like too many buttons buttoned. Hey, you're supposed to be wearing those high socks. I like those highs. I mean, the dress code. The dress code is, says high socks. <laughs> I mean, that shit's insane. And, and then it's also very funny because every year you'd have like people running for student council, and they'd be like, "We're gonna petition that they let our skirts be shorter." <laughs> <It's> like, what? <laughs> why is this like our goal oh collectively God. as students? And why is like any? <laughs> no one would. Why? You're just stressed. It's the opposite. You're stressed out with your wife and you're a principal and you're like. They're trying to make him shorter. They're trying to make him fucking shorter. I'm going to have to buy a whole new set of rulers. What do you mean, Jerry? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be chaos. <laughs> Do you think, like, whoever wrote that originally, because I imagine that school's probably been around for a long time, right? Uh, maybe not? I don't know. In different in different forms. It used to be an all-girls school. Do you think whoever wrote that? <laughs> and then after I graduated, they started letting boys in. <laughs> they started letting boys in after <laughs> I was done. Do you think whoever wrote that dress code, it's, like, enshrined in the teacher's lounge, like the Declaration of Independence? <laughs> <laughs> and they all just look at it like, thank God someone thought of this. The day we had the greatest <laughs> idea. <laughs> The geniuses. They looked down at the signatures. They're like, oh. No, that shit's so creepy. I mean, I like how the, they make the boys wear the sweaters and stuff and the ties because then we all look really handsome and like, God, yeah, fuckable. Yeah. But- yeah, exactly. Everybody's just real hot. Yeah, that is true. They're like, how do we want these children to dress? They're all sexy. <laughs> Top of the line. I want my children fancy. <laughs> It's Cocktail Dress Tuesday, <laughs> ladies. Could you put, like, a pink frill on the bottom if you wanted? Like a <laughs> No, probably not. Because I don't think you could have pins either. People try to have, like, punk pins. Oh, yeah. And, like, your tie. People. And they'd be like, no. People. <laughs> not me at the time. I wasn't cool enough yet. I would wear my Ramon shirt under my school shirt. And then and after it, school, you it, unbutton it. Well, you could see through it, dude, even in school. Oh, man. You know yeah, so I mean? everybody knew what was up. Everybody knew I was a fucking nerd. Too afraid <laughs> to show that. <laughs> I was a fucking Everybody freak. knew just how hard you were everybody trying. Everybody knew how rarely I did laundry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd wear the same fucking shirt every day. Yeah. Because the people know I smelled. Everybody <laughs> <laughs> you knows I smelled. Yeah, like, I wore the same hoodie for, like, a year, and looking back on it, it's like, first of all, I probably did, sm- I mean, I guess I got washed every now and then, but also I'm like, everybody must have thought I was fucking just, like, just destitute. Yeah. <laughs> just wearing the same hoodie every fucking day. Not that that's a bad thing. Some parents just like, God, I feel so self-conscious. My child just won't change it up. <laughs> Everyone thinks I can't buy him more clothes. No fashion sense. Yeah. He's got a full closet. This is ridiculous. I lay out his clothes every morning and he tumbles out of bed. No, I was also a little bit of a, a, a hipster in regards to school uniforms. Because I learned, because we, um, we had to wear ties. Yeah. But then we had to wear uh, sweaters when it was yeah. like mass day or whatever the fuck. Yeah. But you could also wear a sweater whenever. Yeah. And with the sweaters... No, it, it didn't matter if your shirt was tucked in, which for some reason was a thing we were all vehemently against as children. Uh, and so it didn't matter if your shirt was tucked in because you couldn't see it under the fucking sweater. Yeah. And then also it didn't matter if you had a tie on because you couldn't see it under the sweater. Yeah. So when I was like a junior, I was just like, fuck this. I'm just going to like wear the sweater every day. I'm going to wear a sweater every day and just yeah. have that shit like loose and unbuttoned. Yeah. I'm just hanging out. Yeah. And I, I flash my Ramon shirt to people in the hallway so they know I'm cool. I'm cool. <laughs> I'm cool. I'm cool. <laughs> I'm cool. Yeah. It's like, uh, you know what I mean? It's like 2004, so you got like the White Stripes playing. Mm-hmm. It's me. I'm four, bow, 14. Bow, 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 I'm 14. Bow, I'm walking down bow, the hallway. Bow, sweater bow, on. Bow, big Texas in one hand. <laughs> <laughs> 
Big Texas. Oh. I don't see him anywhere. <laughs> you got to go to fucking high school, man. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go to Sam's Club. You can buy like 12 of them. Yeah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I want to go to a vending machine and pay $3 for one. I remember one time cause my dad would buy them for a while. And then uh, I remember one time he realized I was eating one every day, yeah. which I was just doing at school, but he didn't know that because I was buying from the vending machine. Yeah. And then I was, he was going to Sam's Club, and I was like, hey, will you get more Big Texases? And he's like, yeah, sure. And then uh, when he came back, he didn't buy them. And I was like, hey, where? And he goes, you've been eating too many of those. <laughs> he's like, I took a look at what those are. You shouldn't be eating one of, one of those every day. You're out of control. You're out of control. <laughs> and then I was like, I was like, You're a disgrace to your family, son. I was son. a high school kid, so I just probably slammed my door and was like, Fuck you, there's a vending machine. <laughs> there's a fucking vending machine, and you can, what are you gonna do? Maybe not go to school? <laughs> you fucking, you're Fuck fu- you. You fucking Nazi. <laughs> I want my pastry. <laughs> it's big like me. I'm big. I'm a big boy, and it's a big Texas for big boys. <laughs> I get sleepy in AutoCAD if I don't have my big Texas. <laughs> I need the sugar rush to design my roller coasters. <laughs> this roller coaster is gonna go off the rails, literally. <laughs> no, we had an auto. We had AutoCAD, and it was this. Uh, it was this guy who was just the brother-in-law of our of one of our principals. <laughs> <laughs> he was like an architect, but also like you're not an architect. You have free time to teach occasional high school. <laughs> Eric was like, it's something very important to say. I don't have anything very important to say. Just a very similar thing happened in our media productions class. <laughs> so the guy was like, like, I used to work for the newspaper and I got fired. <laughs> no, it was like media production. It was like editing video and like shooting video and shit. Yeah. And uh, the teacher was like cool, and then like halfway through the year, this like fat guy showed up. And the teacher was like, all right, so this is blah, blah, blah. He just graduated from Full Sail University. This is blah, blah, blah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. He was blah. a big fat guy. Yeah. They were like, he's just graduated from Full Sail University. He's graduated from Fat Spill University. <laughs> fat, he's graduated from Oil Spill University. <laughs> he's the one who fucking, that's what, this is what Exxon Valdez ran yeah. into. Um, but you know what Full Sail is, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like a for-profit college, you know? Yeah, Which I Full guess Sail. they're all for-profit. Full Sail is uh, vaguely legit. It's they like commercials, a, I feel like. Because it's not, but it just teaches you um, stuff that, like, you don't need a college. Like, it would be weird if you went to college to be, like, to do learn how to do, like, lighting for yeah, rock I venues. <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> or, like, because Full Sail partners with the WWE. Do they really? Yeah, so they, uh, or they did years ago in the WWE. Well, this guy should have worked. Show. Uh, yeah, exactly. So it was like you go to Full Sail and then like learn how to shoot WWE. That's cool. Uh, which is like, exactly. Well, that makes it a little less interesting. You're not going to be like, I went to NYU Tisch School of the Arts. And I, uh, Ed, Mc- Ed I McMahon. Focused, Vince Mc- I focused on how to shoot commercials for auto dealers. <laughs> I'm in debt $6 billion. <laughs> but he was like, so he's going to be teaching the class from now on. And that guy just taught the class for the rest of the year. And I was like, there's no way that guy's getting paid. You can't just... <laughs> this guy just has so much free time. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. And he would just sit in the back and, like, <laughs> on his computer the whole time. <laughs> Our teacher got... The teacher got fired from sex with a student. We When they got fired, I was taking their class. And we they had, like, a, a student teacher, like a TA. Yeah. Like, someone who's in college. And they were from Jordan. Or maybe Lebanon. Uh, it's not that I don't remember, it's that at the time I didn't care. Okay. You know what I mean? You didn't care about people's ethnicities? At the time, I was just like, the Middle East? How exotic. She's from that country? (laughs) (laughs) Um, No, so she didn't know, like, anything. She barely spoke English. Yeah. And, uh, and then that guy got fired from being sex with a student. (laughs) So in my high school, it's just like, uh... Here's your key to the classroom. <laughs> Don't fuck them. Here you go. <laughs> Try yeah. to not fuck anybody. <laughs> Here you go, you four eleven Jordanian woman. <laughs> we, my friend and I did a project on Iraq, and it was just a comedy sketch. It was supposed to be like a video. We weren't even supposed to do a video. We were supposed to do a presentation, and our presentation was us showing a video. <laughs> That's a presentation. You presented it. Yeah. And so you presented something. But it was just us doing bits. Yeah, it was pretty- us on my dad's boat in the front yard, because his boat was, like, in the front yard. It was yard. just a video of you talking? 
It was a, a, sca- a video we made of a show called Fishing for Facts About Iraq. I, was, is that supposed to rhyme? Yes. Is that why you're putting the emphasis on the consonant or whatever? Yeah, that's why I'm saying it in this weird, <laughs> like, pattern. <laughs> Yeah, not quite. You're close, fishing you're... for facts. Also, I think in the video we said fishing for facts in Iraq, <laughs> which then later we were like, it doesn't make any sense. No, we're not in Iraq. <laughs> we're in a boat. No, but it was just us on this boat just doing bits, joking. Yeah. And then occasionally we'd be like, I wonder what's on this fishing pole. And we would reel in a fishing pole and there'd be like a piece of paper that would be like a map of Iraq. And then on the back it would be like, oh, the exports are wheat and, <laughs> and oil and... <laughs> You lead with oil when it comes to Iraq. You lead with wheat. But also, how little the, did you learn about Iraq? Throughout the video, we would hold up like signs that had like information written on them. But then we didn't know until we went to go edit it that you couldn't, couldn't read. read any of them. Yeah, it was yeah. just bright light. But by then, we'd thrown out all the signs with the information on it. So you just pause the video and be like, "I think that one said." We didn't do anything. We made this video. It was supposed to be an eight-minute in-class presentation. We made an 11-minute sketch video with seven minutes of bloopers. We showed the whole thing in class, and then she just kept clapping. It was like, great job. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was absurd. Did I remember you get an A? We did. We got, like, an A. A plus? But I think we got, like, full credit. Like yeah, 100%, 100%. 100%. Which is, like, we covered nothing. We covered no Wheat, information. oil. <laughs> also, I remember specifically there were like in, there was incorrect information in it because we were trying to read pieces of paper off the ground. Yeah, and then uh, we'd be like mix them all up. So I'd be like, Chris, what is a uh, what co- what year was Iraq founded? And then he'd be like, uh. It, it, uh <laughs> the war of sixteen twelve. Like. <laughs> No, nah, man. So that the moral of the story out there, kids, is just have a make your hook your teacher up <laughs> with one of his students, student. get a tiny Jordanian woman to teach, and then fuck around, fuck around, <laughs> and then years later, comedy career. Years later, listen. There's gonna be a pandemic. There's a little hitch in the road. <laughs> No, it would man. be funny if Bob Dylan shot that video and then he went to edit it and he was like, it was too bright. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Bob. I already <laughs> threw all those signs away. <laughs> that was just gibberish. Like, they flew away in the wind. It was part of the video. God damn it. <laughs> Who the fuck did lighting for this? <laughs> Who lit this alley? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Oh uh, no, nah, man! <laughs> just like we had to arrest that guy. We were leaving, and I was like, "Do you think they have those things for your feet where they like wash the sand off? You know, you kind of like step on them." She was like, "It costs us nine dollars to come here. <laughs> it costs you money to go to a lake. It's nine dollars for a car. Cars aren't even supposed to be in the lake. <laughs> I know. We drove our car in the lake. <laughs> what the fuck is going on?" No, I don't think they're fish. I don't know why you can't have a dog on the lake. I rescued a dog that was swimming in a lake one time. Why don't you take him on a boat? I took him. It was me and a bunch of other, like, children. Like, we were all, like, probably, like, ages, like, 8 to, like, 11. Yeah. And uh, it was up in Michigan in the summertime. And then this dog was just swimming. And then we were like, hey, what the fuck? So we, like, we got this dog. Yeah. And then we just walked around rural Michigan being like, anyone know whose dog this? Like, knocking on strangers' houses. And eventually someone was like, yeah, go up that road half a mile and then over there. And you can cut through this guy's yard. I think he's out hunting. <laughs> he's got a gun. Yeah, he can So cut, go ahead and cut through, cut his, through yard his yard with a strange dog. It might be his. Yeah. He might be angry to see you. No, and then eventually we found the lady and we were all like, yeah. And she's like, you kids are so nice. Do you want to come inside for some club crackers and uh, I'll make some lemonade? And then we were all like, okay. And then we t- went home and told our parents, and then everyone's parents were like, what the fuck? <laughs> everyone's parents were like, Jesus. Thank God that worked out. <laughs> yeah. We almost just lost a whole litter. <laughs> yeah. Holy cow. This summertime trailer park hangout place would have never recovered. <laughs> no, I got great ideas. I've recently, I've been trying to become friends with, uh, this person who's going to space. Yeah. 
and we're like, because I found out that they have a guitar Instagram. Yeah. Where there's like, oh, here's videos of me learning how to play guitar. And they don't have a lot of followers. So I just follow it and I go, great job. And then they, they go, thank you. I'm going to space. And then when they go to space, I'm going to be like, remember me? I'm your friend. Why don't you play funny dinner in space on your Instagram? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's showing us the stats of who's listening where. <laughs> it's like 1% is computer crashes. <laughs> That'd be like the next Y2K is they're like, when we looked into GPS coordinates, we didn't think anyone would ever be in space. <laughs> so as soon as someone goes to space, all this shit gets the fucked The GPS up. is going to fucking freak. The moment someone goes to Mars and is like, all right, how do I get to a Walmart? Yeah. <laughs> all this shit. Tom, we're, we're all going to have to go back to fucking Tom Tom. <laughs> If you have a Garmin in your house, you're going to be a millionaire in five years. I'm going to plug in my magenta. Do not update your Garmins. Do not update your Link Tom Toms. What was the other one? Magellan? Know. Yeah, do not update your Magellan. My magenta Magellan. <laughs> do not update your Magellans. Magenta Magellan. We used to call them Magellans. That's what they're called. Magellan? Oh, Magellan. <laughs> That's inappropriate, man. Let's say that. Well, we were children. There was a sketch group in, in at IU called uh, All Sorts of... Fuck Tr- you, don't come. <laughs> yeah, it's called Bad Comedy. <laughs> it's called All Sorts of Trouble for the Boy in the Bubble. Oh, God. And, uh, and we would all call it uh, Boy in the Butthole. <laughs> but we would say it very fast. We would say this publicly like to the people's faces. But like, yeah, you're in uh, Boy in the Butthole. <laughs> You'd be like, what? You're like, Boy in the Bubble. Boy in the Bubble. I'll throw trouble in the bottle. I'll throw trouble in the bottle. <laughs> and they'd be like, all right, please leave the party. Can you? What are you doing? <laughs> Who invited you? Leave the rap party and stop yelling that people are joke thieves every time you come to a show. <laughs> it's improv. It's, no, it was a sketch. I would, I would always get mad because I'd be like, that's just an old SNL sketch. <laughs> And then they'd be like, I'm I'm 18, I just learned about comedy. I've never laughed I don't before. know who Phil Hartman is. I haven't laughed until now. Yeah. <laughs> There was a controversial once where it was a... Uh, I can't even say the word. Never mind. Cut. <laughs> we don't have any drama yeah. with the cast of Boy in the Bubble circa 2011. Oh, that was their... That was the. That was just the name of the group in general? That wasn't the name they chose? The name of their group was All Sorts of Trouble for Boy in the Bubble. But was that just the name of the group for the IU comedy sketch group? That was their the, group, the, the group, and then get each to year... They pick their name. Yeah, each year they get to pick a name. No, no, that was the name for like a lot... There's still probably a Boy in the Bubble there like right now. Uh, and then there was like a, three other ones, and they're all like, yeah, each year we pick a new person, and then they run it, and then we, uh, uh, we're all voting. Kristen brought uh, uh, Tofu. She gets it. She knows what's up. Yeah. Satan. Damn, that means I can't do any of my edgy rape jokes next semester. <laughs> yeah, man, comedy spread out only so take a much minute. now that I think there can be a clueless people who start doing comedy because they like like Theo Vaughn or whatever the fuck. Yeah. And then they're like, uh, they're like, yeah, I've been, I've been, I'm a big comedy fan and I've been doing it for like two years. I just heard about cancel culture. <laughs> like, I just like. I finally figured it out. Yeah, like they completely missed the whole uh, being canceled and, and wokeness yeah. wave. Because they're like, I just watched Theo Vaughn and Tony. Whoa, there's stuff I can't say? Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. In- All I know is Theo Vaughn In that old- and Lenny Bruce. <laughs> yeah. In that old Louis special I watched, no one said anything bad. And according to that old Time Magazine article I read, he's the best comic of our generation. <laughs> Oh, no. Roy, I've got some news for you. Roy. <laughs> Roy out of uh, Macon, Georgia. <laughs> You're very funny tonight, but a third of those jokes, I, uh, I'm going to Yeah, are you away. excited to go out for two weeks and meet a bunch of uh, stupid people for a long time again? Oh, I've already been exposed to it, man. <laughs> I already I already had a three-day run. This one's nonstop. Oh, man. This is a long one. I had a three-day run where it was like uh, day one. My God, comedy sucks and all these people are insane. <laughs> I've made a terrible mistake. And then at night two, it's like, oh yeah, comedy's great. Everybody's great and fun. <laughs> I love this. Yeah, and then night three, you're like, you know, the people on night one weren't that bad. 
<laughs> yeah, some, I wish some of them were here now. <laughs> that but, was actually an oasis. Yeah. But then you come home and you... Uh, you you, you, you know, go to an open mic, you come home, you untie that noose. Yeah. <laughs> no, man, this run will be, uh, it'll be thrilling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going everywhere, man. I'm going uh, Lafayette, Indiana. <laughs> Yeah, Pippa, it's not coming out until the very end. <laughs> yeah, There's right. no reason we shouldn't have <laughs> put this in on a way earlier no. episode. <laughs> no, literally, this will come out when I'm home. <laughs> I, think, I think this comes out the day after I get back in town. Everybody, come see me in Knoxville. <laughs> Everybody, come see me at to, Flipping Through the Calendar. You promote your tour on the Bidding on the, Comedy. <laughs> will certainly be coming out and have not brought it up on any of the other ones yeah. we pre-recorded. Well, we have more important stuff to talk to. <laughs> oh. Uh, no. But no, it'll be fun to listen to it in post. It'll come out right when you right when you get back. So all those people, they'll be like, wow, I hope he doesn't think I was one of those idiots. No, if you listen, if you saw me on the tour where I... Uh, have a big black eye because I got punched in the face in, in Peoria. No, just that'd be crazy. That would happen. <laughs> I think you've wished it into existence. Oh no! <laughs> no, if you saw me in the Midwest, you're an ace. Thank God you. No, came. if you've seen me anywhere here to life, I feel like if if I don't like you, you know I don't like you. <laughs> it's pretty fucking obvious. Yeah. By uh, the third times, I go, "Good God, you do a lot of cocaine." The person's <laughs> usually like, "Okay." This guy. Uh, all right. All right. Okay. Okay. I guess I should stop telling about L.A. <laughs> Some guy told me he was like talking about something. He's like, "Yes, yeah, so you you do a lot of work." I was like, "Yeah." And he's like, "Yeah, I used to live out in L.A. If uh, if you're ever trying to get on in flappers, let me know." Flappers? Yeah, in some Burbank. Com- in Burbank. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, "Okay, yeah, man, that's like what." I was like, "Yeah, I've never been past like Denver because like." I don't, like it's such a big drive, and then it's like such a money commitment, and I, yeah. so it's like a crapshoot. And he goes, "Oh, I can't get you any money out there." He <laughs> <laughs> was like, oh, "Okay, so you you can get me a spot on an open mic in yeah. LA." Totally, <laughs> you're my hero, man. I gotta take a really quick piss. <laughs> <laughs> he just take the quickest fucking piss you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna snort water for 20 I'm seconds. Take a very rejuvenating shit, real quick. <laughs> I'm gonna go in there, shit my pants real quick. Come right, running back right out here. Yeah, <laughs> refreshed, ready to go, jumping around. <laughs> <laughs> Who's ready to hear me do Paul Rodriguez jokes from the '90s? <laughs> Who wants to hear some? Who wants to hear some ant material? That's always great because it's like. I wonder if this is how, like, maybe, this is probably how, like, the next generation of comics will feel about, like, people smoking weed. But it is just so funny. It's like, anytime you see a comic who's, like, uh, like on, visibly on coke, it's He's like. Gacked out. Yeah, it's like, don't you know that that ended? <laughs> this is, this is, everyone said this was a bad idea for a long <laughs> yeah, time. But also, it's just like, that's not what is cool in comic. Like, <laughs> Smoke you're weed. You're dating yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the next generation, it'll all be about sobriety. No, it'll just be people on pills with face tattoos who are like, are you <laughs> just passing me? out are on you stage? my mom? But they're just imagining saying that. Really, it's coming out like, <laughs> But they have the best photographers in the industry. <laughs> they got great headshot. Yeah. Real cool faces. If you can get a team of photographers and people who can come up with hashtags... I'd build up a brand. I'm a professional hashtagist. Hashtag hashtagery. I run a hashtagery. <laughs> hashtagery. <laughs> How about live laugh launch? I'm talking to NASA. <laughs> Listen, man, I don't think we need any more hype for a rocket launch. Also, how'd you get in here? My friend Camille is on it. It's the rocket going to space. He said I could get a guest set. On the rocket? Yeah. <laughs> he said I could do some time. Yeah. On the rocket. On the rocket. How much time did you want to do on the rocket? Hey, I made you a special copy of my zine. It's how to it's do It's a real tight rocket, rocket man. Shows. I, I don't know if we got any room for it. <laughs> the uh, NASA said I could do it. When? I was messaging them, 
NASA's the one who told me that this was the lineup. <laughs> NASA would have told me. <laughs> NASA would have. If we were going to have another astronaut on this rocket, NASA would have already told me. Look, man, if it was up to me, I would put you on, but I can't. It's not up to I'm me. I'm just uh, the head of NASA. <laughs> I'm just the CEO of NASA. <laughs> I'm just the president of Space. Elon Tusk. <laughs> hey. That's another guy's name. No, it's not. Oh, okay. He's operated under a fake name. He's how I found out about this astronaut. Keelan Tusk. He shared a thing of them and was just like, <laughs> this person's going to space one day. Oh, so you're, he's not actually going to be an astronaut one day. No, they are. They're studying to be an astronaut. They're doing all kinds of like, crazy stuff. I don't know. Why are you saying? That doesn't sound like he's going to be an astronaut. No, they're going to be an astronaut. What? Also, it's a lady. Okay, I, I don't know what that has to do with it. Well, you but... keep saying he. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. But, uh... Don't misgender my friend. <laughs> no, they're a French person. And they're... It'd be like if you just knew someone who was in music school, and you're like, no, they're going to be Mick Jagger. No, this person's <laughs> going to be, go be an astronaut. I think that, in my mind, the fact that Elon Musk shared this story of them... Elon Musk is an idiot. Makes me think. Yeah, I know, but he's the kind of idiot who would book someone to like a 30 year year go into space contract as a child. I'm going to get him. You're 18. You want to sign a deal to go to Mars? What kind of crazy space training do you do on ground? On on ground? I don't know, but apparently you learn classic rock songs on guitar. Apparently, that's a big part of the curriculum. That's most of my interactions with my friends. Big part of the curriculum is learning back in black. Yeah. A progressive video of them yeah. learning how to play Stairway to Heaven over three weeks. Exactly. <laughs> no, they're going to space. Yeah. Well, good for them. No. I've met a few people who knew George W. Bush, and they always said that he was a complete idiot. Yeah. And that they were like shocked that he became. They were. You uh, know, I've seen W. Well, yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> no, but I've had multiple people be like, "Yeah, I grew up with him," and. uh I know, high school, or a college professor was telling me that, and he was like, yeah, I lost a bunch of money on a bet. Because I was like, I know this guy, and he's a fucking idiot. There's no way he will win the election. The system works. <laughs> and he lost money. Which it's like, now when I'm hearing that, I'm like, that's a funny story. But if you think about it at the time... Terrifying. That bet was probably like eight <laughs> months of them arguing of like, the election's not over yet. Florida, the Florida <laughs> yeah, that's votes. that's a long bet. <laughs> the Florida votes. <laughs> It's a long bet. <laughs> We're going off the electoral college, I said. <laughs> we said who was who won the presidency, not who became president. When I lost my bet after winning my first bet, I got a little cocky after winning my first bet. What was your first your first bet? I had it with your buddy Andrew Blank, and then I had it with somebody I was working with at the time. And it was um, that Donald Trump would win the he presidency. Would win. Um, and then I made the same bet with someone else. For a substantially larger amount of money. How much was that? <laughs> it was only a hundred bucks, but oh, okay. I was fairly confident. And then when he lost, and then the next day there was contention, I went up to him. I was like, I should really probably be more of a dick about this. <laughs> <laughs> I should really drag this out. <laughs> yeah, you should have become like a, a recount the votes guy. <laughs> That's what I, yeah. I should have been storming the Capitol yeah. to try and make sure I won that hundred dollars. Exactly. <laughs> Spend the rest of my life in jail with some fucking guy in a weird hat. Like some kind of curb episode. <laughs> bum, bum. <laughs> I don't think he won the election. <laughs> Larry, you campaigned for Hillary. All right, so we got a good idea for an indie movie, yeah. a good idea for a curb episode. <laughs> the cool high school wrestler. <laughs> I hope and someone also in, that one about the wrestler. And also that one about the wrestler. <laughs> I hope someone in Hollywood is listening to this one. There's some great ideas floating around. Oh, I've met people who have told me that they work in Hollywood and they're going to make me huge. But the thing is, I've never been to Hollywood, so I've always met these people in like Jackson, Michigan, <laughs> or like Des Moines, Iowa, and so it's wearing like, like cargo shorts. They're always like, "No, I'm visiting my family," and then I'm like, "Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I like it here. I was here nine months ago," and they were like. Oh, I should have come out. Like, I thought you were visiting your family. <laughs> it was a long visit. I thought you lived in L.A. and you were visiting your family here. <laughs> you fucking liar. Uh... And they always make me talk on the phone with them. And it's like, man, if we would have just done this in text, I would still believe that you were a real <laughs> Hollywood person. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they was like, call me and tell me about, you know what I mean? What's good? We'll figure it out, man. What? <laughs> yeah. That's happened more than once. Yeah, oh, this happened a ton of times. Jeez. I've lost all these people's numbers. Yeah, you should call them back. Some of them I should have kept, though. 
Oh, you've lost all of them. Yeah. Oh. You know what? That's probably why I'll never be successful is because I had like three people in a row I interacted with that. So now I'm like, oh, yeah, everyone's a liar. <laughs> Everyone is just some unemployed person going through a manic episode who just likes my comedy. <laughs> that's not, that's not going to get me much. Uh, this guy is just finishing up his California Coke in Mississippi. <laughs> yeah, this is a, <laughs> Hey, how you, that was show. one of the places. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what you what, said. <laughs> I didn't say Mississippi. I said Jackson, uh, Michigan. Oh, okay. Yeah. But easy to make a mistake, you know what I mean? Similar yeah. size cities, similar M yeah. names. What do you think, Dave? He never has anything to Once say. Once again, our third <laughs> Mike, Dave, Hannah, useless. <laughs> we should develop a fake third Mike. No, we should a just real get third another Mike. friend. We have a third real Mike. third Mike. How the fuck are we going to do that? <laughs> Too old to make friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man. Here's here's my what I think is going on. Everyone in Louisville hates both of us for very different reasons. <laughs> yeah. It's possible hey, at least for us to make another legitimate. friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm the most beloved man in town. Yeah, sure. Strangers compliment me on Reddit. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm beloved now because I have no more power in comedy. Is that all it took? You had to give it all up to get everything back? What? <laughs> you had to give it all up to get everything, get everything back. back. Yeah, friendship. <laughs> That friendship I so desired with the local open mic with the local, scene. With <laughs> all those local crushers. Yeah. Uh, no, it's a it's great of the second there's someone else doing something uh, that people uh, want to be a part of and then can't just out of logistics. It's fascinating how quickly you escape their minds as an enemy. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's weird. Oh. You used to like that guy and hate me when I ran a show. Now he runs a show. You're telling me how you hate him. You, you hate him, but I'm great. This is all bizarre. Huh. It's almost like it wasn't really about me or him. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> no, here's what I think is going on in the world as a whole. We all went, because remember, everybody used to have, like, a phone number. Remember when you had a remember phone number? Remember when you knew number? phone numbers? Remember, remember remembering phone numbers, remember, everybody? Remember having a phone number? Remember an answering machine? You'd be looking down going, what about what grapes? The? Shampoo? Two, four, three? I don't know this number. Kevin? I know that person. I know a Kevin. I don't know a Kevin Parsons. Kevin ain't got this number for that Kevin. Hey. Good night, everybody. <laughs> I feel like we went through a lot of different comedian impressions in that. Yeah. <laughs> I was just trying to be generic, late 90s, early 2000s white guy, and then at the end I became Sebastian Maniscalco. <laughs> who did you, who are you feeling? I was kind of leaning into a little bit of dice at the oh, end out okay. of nowhere, which isn't really a 90s comedian necessarily. Yeah, early 90s. Early 90s, but that was still the 80s, man. Hickory Dickory Dock, the president was getting his, uh, hold on, Hickory Dickory, Hickory Dickory Dock. <laughs> I gotta stop doing improv, <laughs> folks. <laughs> Andrew Dice Clay trying to work out nursery rhymes on <laughs> writing on stage. Yeah. Hickory Dickory Dock, the president sucked my cock. Hold I went on. up the <laughs> hill with, uh... Uh, man, man, uh, McCain and Jill, Jill McCain, is that a name? Jill McCain. <laughs> Sorry, everybody, I'm wild tonight. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I got my leather jacket on too tight. <laughs> or Chris Rock, or <laughs> Dice Clay doing like a Chris Rock thing where he tries to bomb. He's like, all right, uh, Hickory Dickory Duck. <laughs> <laughs> Does Chris Rock try to bomb? Isn't that his famous thing when he's like trying out new material? He like doesn't sell it like he's Chris Rock. Oh, that's genius. Yeah. Uh, that is, that, that does sound familiar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it does sound like a thing. He, like, doesn't do his whole Chris Rock thing. Yeah, he just he, he just, just does it. He just, he just says stuff, yeah. I do that sometimes, and it's, uh... <laughs> it always pops. I'm mad because Chris Rock. No, I do that sometimes at open mics, and, like, or if I'm, if I'm fucking around, if it's, like, a, uh, if I'm really just fucking around, I'll just, uh, like, purposely not sell shit. Yeah. And just do it like the bare minimum yeah. and put it into the position where it's going to bomb. Because when, for me at least, when I'm going to bomb, that's when I my brain writes things out of necessity. Check it out. A mouse. I didn't see it. It's not, You can see it. It's in the corner. It's moving now. I still can't see it. Oh, 
There it is. Yeah, like right now my brain was like bombing, so it invented a mouse. So it invented a mouse. <laughs> I ran through the living room. It invented a new thing. There's still a mouse trap in there. It'll go in there eventually. Oh no! Hopefully not on air. <laughs> well, death on a, the pod. I won't mention what kind of trap it is. It's a live trap. There's a live mongoose in the box, <laughs> <laughs> ready to fucking go. <laughs> Hey, what if we just let loose like a bunch of cats in here? That's what I, I'm trying to do the opposite of my girlfriend's house. Let loose a bunch of mice. I told you that's a the bad cats idea. Can have a little fun. <laughs> That'd be great if we just saw the mouse jump into the ceiling. <laughs> Clear nine feet. <laughs> Holy cow. Uh, usually they are only around when it's uh, cold outside. I well, the weather's why, it's very hot out. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Usually the mice are only around when it's cold. The, ma- the mice are like, it's too damn hot. I gotta get inside. And then they're on here and they're like, fuck this. Yeah, damn. This place this looks like shit and it's hot. This place sucks. This place is terrible. <laughs> this guy doesn't even know about all the countries yet. <laughs> this guy hasn't even memorized every country. No, man. I got a theory. You got a, a joke? Tell what's a jo- th- Tell the folks a street joke. That would be great because we were talking last night how uh, notable recluse... Uh, Thomas Pynchon. Pynchon. He, Pynchon. Notable Cajun recluse of author Thomas <laughs> Pynchon. He, uh, he reached out to Salman Rushdie during the whole fatwa thing and was like, Salman, let's meet up. Let's let's get lunch. Let's, let's, let's become, get loose, baby. Let's become friends. <laughs> and how great would it be if, like, then you just see in the media the next morning just a, a beheaded Salman Rushdie being held up by some <laughs> old guy you've never seen before. And then he's just like, ladies and gentlemen, we got him. And then you see the cryon. <laughs> Famous author Thomas Pynchon has captured Islamic <laughs> or anti Islamic criminal. Anti Islamic criminal. Salman Rushdie. Salman Rushdie. I've gone deep undercover. <laughs> I've gone deep. I've created the most surreal personality of all time. I had the CIA write a bunch of books. <laughs> Charles Manson wrote Gravity's <laughs> Rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Hawkins later killed his, bludgeoned his wife to death. Oh, sorry, not killed. Bludgeoned. Bludgeoned. And then drove <laughs> to his death. <laughs> his wife set fire to his car, drove her car off a cliff. Set fire to the house, drove her car off the cliff. Set fire to the car, drove her house off the cliff. <laughs> Way more fun. Yeah. <laughs> killing the house. Oh, sorry, killing himself. Killing the house and himself. No, nah, man, I bet that, like, you know what I mean? This Donald Wayne Foster guy, he sounds like trouble. Anthrax case. Leave them alone. He couldn't figure it out. Just because they aren't as big as oh, Megadeth, and then he fucking... Slayer, and Metallica. Look up the John Wayne Gacy thing. because Or not John Wayne Gacy. We should tell the people who did. Da- da- Donald Wayne Foster. Da- Donald da- Wayne Dave Foss, Thomas. Dave Thomas, Dave Thomas. Dave Thomas, famous fast food employee and CEO. What's the John Wayne Gacy? John Wayne. Not John Wayne Gacy. John Benet Ramsey. <laughs> that's on the <laughs> John. That's on the, that's on the Dave Thomas page. Common that's on mistake. <laughs> Dave Thomas's. After creating a burger, many believe Dave Thomas <laughs> murdered child pageant star. No, but he uh, he like had helped like do something for the John Benet Ramsey case, and they're like, "This is great. You finally figured it out." And then they found out that he had written a letter to the person that he was trying to. It doesn't really make sense. He had written a letter to the person that he now decided was guilty, and he was like, I know you're innocent. He wrote this person a letter out of the blue. Yeah. He's like, I know you're innocent. You know, something will happen to exonerate you. And then later, he's like, that guy's guilty. And then they're like, well, he wrote that letter, so throw all that guilty stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is weird. Why would you ever tell someone that they're innocent? <laughs> yeah, he was like, yeah, you're innocent. You'll be all right. Well, this was before he was on the case. Yeah. He just wrote it out of the blue. That is very suspicious. I mean, I've written a lot of those types of letters to people. What? You're in, You're innocent. I think you're innocent. And then they're just like, what the fuck is this? What the fuck? And then I send a follow-up. Do you want to work together sometime? Do you want to work together sometime? <laughs> Listen, I don't, know what, I don't know what's going on with you, but I'm sure the truth will come Do you come know to anyone light. who can put, like, 25 to 150 people in a room? At once. For me? Hopefully at once. <laughs> <laughs> it could be one after another. I could do one-on-one. I ran into this issue in Cape Girardeau. I did, because two shows, but uh, I did the first show. I do, I do fit, like, 45, 50 minutes of, like, 
No, here's what I've been thinking about, man. Because you know, so everyone's got used to have phone of email or phone. Not anymore. And used to have uh, like everyone had a email address or yeah. a phone number, and that's like everyone had like that's what you used. Uh, but then now everyone's like, fuck that. I just I'll, I'll message people on Facebook or Instagram, or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Or like a lot of different platforms. Everyone's using different platforms, and it's all it's all separate. And everyone abandoned, like, landlines yeah. and shit. So there's no centralized thing. And then also, everybody's like, hey, man, get offline. It's better for you, man. Ditch social media. Are those people, is that person just trying to, like, get rid of somebody? No, but if you think about that, so then everyone's arbitrarily get. So it's like, I'm over here. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get off Facebook. And then someone else is like, I'm going to get off Instagram. You both, you've lost. We Neither of us can ever communicate again. Yeah, you're done. Or someone else is like, I'm ditching this email address. It's, it's a spam, spam city. <laughs> so what I'm wondering, are we living in a current uh, uh, Tower of Babel? Thanks for listening, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what, what the fuck are you talking about, Tara? About like there, no one can understand what anybody is no saying. No one soon if we keep going down this road, route. Because think about it, even where it's like I need to contact that person. Does anyone have their information? Don't dox them. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty soon we'll all just be running around the city screaming at each other. Everyone will be. No dis- one will know what's going on. Yeah, it'll be like <laughs> impossible to reach everybody. Everyone will be essentially speaking diff- not different languages. But communicating through different channels. Yeah. And then, uh, you know what I mean? So I think, yeah, I think that's what's going on. Well, we always have to get on TikTok. Exactly. We all need to choose one thing. We'll have to learn thing. how to dance. We need to choose one thing that is uncorruptible. TikTok. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> the most surface level corrupt one. <laughs> the one that's from China. Yeah. <laughs> No, man, but that's what I'm saying is it, it, the height of society was, uh, I, know, I guess, what five we, years ago. I guess, like, <laughs> <laughs> Whenever, tail end of Obama. In my eyes, it's when everyone accepted that Facebook Messenger was the best way to communicate. That's the way we all talk. Yeah. Sometimes you meet that weirdo on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's you all any, gone. You, get any, you got any job updates? Uh... Did that place that taught you how to work, and then you were like, awesome, when do you want me to come back? And they were like, never. We'll get in touch with you. <laughs> they got. They did get in touch with they me. They did get in touch with you? They said, uh... <laughs> they said, hey, man, I, we, got, we got back with an old employee. <laughs> said, Sorry, <laughs> it's man. Not, it's, it's not you. It's not, it actually was kind of similar to that. <laughs> they were like, she was like, listen, I had a really good time like hanging out with you and like talking to you. It was fun working with you. But, like, right now, I just need to, like, work on my own. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> she's like, while well, I'm like... We I need just, to work by she, myself. She's like, while we're, while we're reopening, I really just kind of need to get back on my feet and figure out how to do this job again on my own before I start training somebody. Oh, my God. <laughs> she's like, in the future, I'm going to get in touch with you and maybe we can work something out. <laughs> but right now, there's just no room for you here. <laughs> Imagine to be like I'm, It really was like a, a fucking classic breakup. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. <laughs> she was so overwhelmed that she couldn't have an employee. <laughs> There's just so much work. I can't I can't hire somebody. There's just so much work to do. It didn't I mean I know it's bullshit. But you got yeah. dumped, man. I, got, I did get dumped by that job, but it was a nice dump. <laughs> that job fucking broke up. <laughs> <laughs> that job broke my heart. <laughs> I'll never get over it. I know, man. I'm going to show up at that job with, like, flowers and just be like, please, please. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. Give me another chance. Man. I tried to get a job back once by sending them, like, a very nice message where I was like, uh, I know I really fucked up, but, like, <laughs> I'm changed. This things was the wake up now. call I needed to re appreciate this <laughs> things, job. Things have changed. I'm gonna go back to being the way I used to be. Getting Not... high in my car every hour and a half. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to at least rolling my window down when I drive to work, getting <laughs> high, <laughs> so that at least I wouldn't smell like weed. I got too comfortable. I took <laughs> you for advantage. It, they're like, I'm we sorry. didn't know any of this was going on. <laughs> 
<laughs> Listen, that is not why we fired you. <laughs> yeah. No, man, let's I'll find a joke. Okay, I got I got it, man. Hey, hi This has been funny dinner. <laughs> if you'd like to subscribe <laughs> You can find us on Patreon or your podcast platform of choice for free episodes, Patreon bonus episodes, and bonus content outside of the podcast. Words. For free yeah, episodes, bo- bonus episodes, Patreon content. <laughs> Networking, LinkedIn, my Man. business card. <laughs> We're going to do the intro to Must Have Got Lost by the Jay Giles Band. And once again, at... 1,000 Patreon subscribers. I will release nude pictures of myself. Should Thank we, you. Good night. Should we do a song? Sure. What kind of song do you want to do? Uh, what do you want to do? It was your idea. I was done. Do <laughs> 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 It'd be great. That's how, like, the like end of like WHF work where he's like, "All right, man, thank you for coming." And the guest just goes, "Do you want to do a song? <laughs> Let's sing." <laughs> All right, everybody. This has been WTF. Hey, also, though, David Duchovny, what was the X Files like? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're wrapping up. I'm just curious. <laughs> I just, yeah, I just want to let everybody know it was you at the yeah. end. I didn't want to get out here without talking about Californication. <laughs> Fighting and fucking. Did you really write that book?